Hi there, and welcome to my advanced gold farming guide for vampire survivors. I'm Icon, and in this video, I'll show you a method which yields something between 12 to 15,000 gold per run, depending on your luck. As usual, you will find the timestamps for this in the description box below, so if you're looking for a certain part of this tutorial, go check it out. So first things first, part one is about the strategy, what to do and what to what do you need for it. So we're going to roll this thing with the character Christine. You unlock it by playing the pentagram once in one of your games and leveling up to the rank of seven. That's all you need to do. Why Christine? Mostly because of her insane cooldown reduction. She comes with 25% cooldown reduction right from the get-go. This is very synergistic with the pentagram, but also with all other weapons. Her downside is she comes with an extremely low health pool. She's only 50% of all the other dudes. Even Poe has more HP. And therefore, it's, it's a little bit of a more challenging run to pull off but the requirements are rather low you need just that character and power up wise go for growth and greed and beyond that well it's up to you i i roll with these as an example of a low budget build mostly because recovery helps you to mitigate the low hp might helps you to mitigate the low damage because this lady is not only fragile she also deals less damage her total um, minus there is 35 person, so your weapons hit less hard. So this really helps a lot. And the other things are just, well, quality of life. And this is a massive damage power up. Luck, I wanted to mention here, is extremely useful due to the fact that it does influence your pentagram. As you see here, it's best with cooldown and luck. So beyond that, this is an extremely fun method of grinding gold, because once the pentagram is upgraded, it transforms from an item-destroying thing into an absolute factory of experience points. So let's get started and hop into it. We're playing this in the inlaid library on Hyper. The inlaid library has the ideal mixture of a nice enemy density and the correct items lying around in the open. That's why I'm still sticking to this level. I tried out the other, uh, some other levels. I haven't tried out the dairy plant yet. This is one thing that I need to play test still. But the inlaid library is also the sweet spot of difficulty and reward because the dairy plant is a lot harder to play. Now, let's get in there and let's talk about how to pull it off. This is the end of the strategy part. So in this part, I'm going to talk about tips and tricks and how to get towards the power phase of this build. Luckily, it'll all be decided in the first 10 minutes. Whether you you fail or not will be mostly decided during the first 10 minutes. So Arcana-wise, I just want to pinpoint quickly the number 4. If you have access to it, it gives you extra rewives, which is really great just makes everything a lot more reliable. So your character gets a free level up at the beginning of the game. This allows you to just select whatever weapon you deem powerful and useful at the beginning. So the first weapon you'll choose is a pretty tricky and difficult question because you need something which is efficient right from the get-go. You need a weapon that has a high efficiency level with low with low power, with low investment, because at the beginning of the game, our first goal will be to grab the crown accessory, which you need to evolve the pentagram, and level up that pentagram as quick as possible. So your first weapons are really, really important. My personal favorite for the first weapon is and stays the Rune Tracer, because the Rune Tracer is just OP. A good starting weapon is also the Whip, but I personally don't like it too much mainly because it falls off in the late game dps wise tremendously so beyond that well i'd say every weapon works out in the early game it's up to you how you play it but here these are just a couple of thoughts if you don't like your your early selection luckily you can just restart it quite easily and quite quickly so here we roll with the Rune Tracer. The pistol here is worth a recommendation. It is an insanely good late game weapon, but don't roll for it early game. It's a perfect example for don't roll early game, uh, don't roll late game weapons early on. It'll really make your life harder uh, than necessary. Same goes for stuff like the axe. Later, it's a really good weapon because you have an insane cooldown reduction. This makes you toss it out way more often, but early on it sucks. 
So Rune Tracer is a good thing to go. And in the later stage of this video, I'm also going to talk about itemization a little bit more. So the first goals I've already talked about, we want to upgrade the pentagram and grab the crown accessory. If it doesn't work out during the first 10 minutes to grab a crown, it is often worth just resetting it because you really need to evolve that weapon as quick as possible. So another thing worth mentioning early on is getting yourself one weapon for personal defense and one weapon for spreading out towards the enemies. I personally like the Bible and the garlic in that regard because they both create a zone of death around you. Just pick it as you personally prefer. I stick with the Bible because I like the, the total DPS of it more, whereas the garlic is way better in the defensive department, but it really depends on your own taste. And you can already see how the cooldown reduction here kicks in and it's really, really massive. So another thing, don't pick up the stone mask because you can grab it here for free and you can grab it after you have already picked up six accessories. So it's a false friend and you don't need to pick it up mostly because your main time of grinding gold is when your build is complete and when you're leveled out. So the stone mask is really not a necessary thing to pick up that early on. Here, let's go for the Spellbinder. I'm opting out the Attract Orb here in this build entirely too, mainly because the evolved version of the Pentagram will suck in all the XP crystals for you as well, so you don't need that anymore. This means this build runs better without the flask, because you need it, but... That's another day story. Spinach. Let's talk about spinach. This is basically one of my favorite accessories because it mitigates like most of the downside of Christine. You gain extra power so your weapons are not hitting like a wet noodle anymore. That's a really really good thing. And another thing, first off, try to move west in your run. Always try to get closer to the empty tomes because they are way more important than any uh, than the uh, stone mask. Like I mentioned before, the stone mask isn't really important early on. What's now important during the first 10 minutes, level as much as possible. Try to get as many levels in as possible and try to level up that pentagram as quick as possible because the higher the level of the pentagram, the less shenanigans it'll do to you. It'll grow more and more... Um, more and more reliable that's the word <laughs> and it'll gimp your income less and less so that's one thing another thing if you manage to get yourself a chest get it off take it off screen stay away from it until the very moment that you want to open it your pentagram before it is upgraded has this terrible tendency of deleting unopened chests this is absolutely frustrating if it happens and you can avoid that by just not getting on the not not getting in the screen into the screen anymore until you really want to open that chest. This is a little bit annoying and the pentagram is early on a pretty ungrateful item, but you'll get rewarded for the gorgeous moon upgrade so massively. You'll 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 just know how much it is worth for you. So another um worthy mention here due to the fact how luck impacts the pentagram is to go for uh, a clover because the clover will increase your luck even more and that's well what's not to like about that this also en enhances the reliability of this item and therefore it is really really worth it so early on your your hunt for the crown is one of your major concerns like I said, if it doesn't come around quickly, you can easily reset. Tirajizu is also extremely worth mentioning and practically always worth picking up, because with that thing you can, as far as long as you have unlocked it, create one of the most powerful weapons in game, and that's the uh, upgraded version of the double pistols. And this is, well, what can I say? It is just bonkers. So let's go for another pentagram level up. And by the way, don't worry about any bosses that you delete early game and bosses whose chests you lose. You won't 
get any upgraded weapons before minute 10 is over. And if you manage to get yourself a chest early game, you will want to leave screen ASAP and leave it unopened until level 10 is over. So therefore, it really doesn't matter that much if you delete your first one, two, three or four chests. Not at all. It really doesn't bother. You just need to take care of that one or two of those one or two chests that actually manage to spawn even though the pentagram tries to kill them and then you're just then you're golden. This is really nothing to worry about and there will be more than enough chests to reward you later on with. So don't worry about those lost chests in the in the early game. It is a little bit annoying, and the more you can save of them, the better, of course, because the gold reward of the chests is pretty big. But beyond that, really, don't worry too much about them. So this is pretty much all I can say about the first 10 minutes. You will try to get that crown, you will try to get those weapons that you like, and another thing that's really really important, once you've managed it to level up the pentagram to level 8, don't level up any other weapon to level 8 that you could evolve in your inventory. Mainly because you don't want to evolve any other weapon besides the pentagram. So. Let's say in this scenario, I'll had, I'll ha I have the Spellbinder already in my inventory and sadly not the crown, but let's say I had it. So if the pentagram was level 8 and the Bible in this scenario and I'd open a chest, both of these items would compete for the upgrade and that's a bad thing. You want that the first, you want that first upgrade under any circumstances hit that pentagram because ideally you want that pentagram on level on minute 10 ready to go and that's that's the ideal situation that you can go for so let's fast forward to the part which comes after we've hit level uh, minute 10 because there's not really much more that i can explain about this part so see you there now, we've successfully reached the post 10 minute mark. I actually did die once during this run, so if that happens to you too often, Grim, uh, you should consider opting into more defensive weapons like the whip, the, the, um, the garlic and the like. This can help you a lot if you end up dying too often and not reaching this point. So, first chest after 10 minutes. Luckily, we didn't uh, get anything. So, I somehow end up with uh, with this quite often that uh, the first chest doesn't yield it. But you see, the, the pentagram is there and now the second chest did the trick. It's practically almost every time happening like that. And now we're in the good spot. So the Gorgeous Moon is a completely different item compared to the um, Pentagram, and now, well, it does spawn some gems, destroy everything, and suck it in afterwards. And that's how we're going to earn our money now. This is insane, because from this point on, you are in an entirely different level of earning um, XP there, because you don't need to worry about these things anymore. So. Every few seconds you get an intense boost of XP and an entire uh, screen wipe. Due to the fact that this character has insanely lowered cooldowns, you'll also have that quite often. So, after 10 minutes, what's next? You'll try to fill your accessory slots as good as possible and grab yourself those empty tomes as quick as possible because they are a massive upgrade. As soon as you get the a rank 5 empty tome, your gameplay is an entirely different thing. So let's wait it out here. And at this point, we have to select more and more um, weapons and the like. Right now, my most, in, my, my most important thing that I'm looking for is, as a matter of fact, a sixth item for the accessory slot. You don't need to do that. You can just pick up your uh, empty tome and uh, go away happy. Like for example here, you don't need to min-max like that. And from this point on, your next goal will be to pick up the remaining empty tomes if you want to. Or 
get over to the stone mask. Here I want to pick up these things because they are actually quite useful to have. Because the more cooldown reduction we got, the better. And at the end of the day, these are free rank ups. And, well, if you already have the map, you can already see how many there are. If you don't, it's always around one, two to three, one to three of these books. It really depends a lot on, on your luck. So, there we go, double pistol. And now, what's the next big deal? So, you're going to complete your build from this point on. It's now about finishing your itemization, of course. And, oh, let's, let's go for it. Let's go for an ultimate late game build. And leveling up your stuff and surviving until this very point. So, here you'll have to decide how hard you want to um, commit. Because you can easily kill yourself, but you can also take some decisions how much gold you're going to try to earn. Because basically, the more late game you put into your build, the more stuff you can kill, enemy-wise. There are options to get more enemies into the game, be that the curse update, uh, upgrade by itself, the power-up, we're going to talk about that later, or picking up the Skull Mania accessory, which increases the entire amount of available enemies at the end of the run by 50%. So this is, um, these are options. The more enemies you ha kill, the more you level up. So therefore, the the power of your build, the, the entire, the kill power of your build really does matter a lot. And so the more DPS you'll bring up into your build, the more money you'll earn at the end of the day, as a matter of fact. And if you feel like you're really powerful with the build you have, go for a Skull Maniac. Or if you feel like you're totally um, up for the challenge, pick yourself a cursed, um, a cursed power up on the on the power up screen. But more about that later. So the next thing now is we're up for that stone mask. As a matter of fact, I'd recommend you to not open any chests anymore until you have found the stone mask, actually. because And level it up entirely. Because at this point, you don't need to open chests anymore that desperately. You've got what you need. And the, more, the longer you wait, the more gold you get out of them, because those chances don't come back, basically. You don't get any retroactive gold gain or anything like that, so use it wisely. And as you see here, I'm I'm blindly moving forward now, and the the frequency of, of this pentagram is crazy. And with that, you can really easily kill a a lot of enemies and gain a lot of money with that. So here, for example, I'm leaving that chest behind because I really don't feel like I need it. And that's practically it. All you need to do now is survive long enough and kill enough stuff. When you're when you've successfully upgraded your pentagram, your build selection or your your build phase is really mostly oriented around how to kill as many bad guys as possible because your kill speed is directly influential influ influencing your your gold gain. The more baddies you kill, the more baddies spawn, the more level ups you get, the more gold you'll get. Because at the end of the day, most of the gold we'll gain not by opening chests, but by utilizing the um, gold bags that you get for leveling up beyond the beyond the item upgrades. So it goes to the stone mask, and that's the point where you can just go or whatever you want, but you already might have noticed. It is quite crazy, and you can amp, amp up the craziness with by increasing the enemy numbers. As long as you can kill them, you're golden, and this is a really, really fun way. It does take quite some preparation to get it rolling here, but once you're at this point, as you see here, you're, you're just grinding out the, the money like crazy. I've, I've made the experience that whenever I came to this point, where you see me right now, the there was never any failure anymore happening. My miss, my my failures were mostly happening between minute between the first ten to twelve minutes, 
That's either me not getting a crown or me drafting a horrible early game build. The most difficult part, that's what I definitely can say, is getting yourself to the point where you can where you successfully upgrade that um, pentagram. Once you're behind that and beyond that, it's really only about optimizing your income anymore. In, uh, anymore, really. You, you don't have that many challenges anymore, as you see here. It'll only get more and more ridiculous now, the more weapons I upgrade. And yeah, that's, that's the end of the second part of this video. So now we're going to go for the last part of this video and that's going to be itemization and power up and all these things. So I'll see you there. So here we have the aftermath of this run. And as you see, we grinded with exactly this setup, 14,000 gold out of this run. So weapon wise, I wasn't too happy with the whole decisions guns were pretty good but let's talk about what you can do to get your results here better in the long run so let's talk about power-ups and itemization so this run was done with this kind of power-ups so you see that there's definitely room for more and there was not a single quintuple chest with five gold bags so we only had two of them with three slots in the entire run. And I bet that there would be a lot more kill speed achievable when you tweak out these things. So what's really important to know with this build is it's not the pentagram generating the gold. It is the entirety of your build and the kill speed that you can put up, which creates the gold. The pentagram only adds a little bit of icing on the cake and does the job of the attract orb for you, basically. That's that's the gist of it. You get a free screen wipe from time to time, but all in all, this thing just does the work of the attract orb without clogging up your accessory slots, at least from my standpoint. So let's talk a little bit about itemization here a little bit more and in detail. So, and say hi to the cat. So, we're opting out of the center water and the labora with this uh, build. If you want to implement that, you should really pick up the attract orb anyways. I mean, I personally think it, it really doesn't add up together well, but if you really like this item because it is really good, go for it. But the whole trick in this build is for me that I can opt out the attract orb and use the crown that I use for the gold grinding build anyways and have some dirty old fun with it. So for maximizing the damage output, there's right now, I think, no more effective weapon than the combination of these two pistols. Like this is for now the most insane weapon that I've uh, found and I didn't find anything that does uh, an equival equivalently nice job in terms of DPS. If you have access to the explosive arcana, the one that uh, you can grind up for level 99 on I forgot which character, you get basically a insanely powered up version of this fire wand. Since you always roll for spinach, try it out with the explosive arcana this is a real real high dps item i was so surprised about it next up and the worthy mentions is the lightning ring if you can't get your hands on a on an early duplicator it's insane the lightning ring more so the thunder loop is quite often in the top area of my dps the double birds well i have a pretty much a i don't know i I don't like the weapon out of one simple reason. It does eat up a lot of level ups in your in your grinding procedure. And at some point your level ups are your gold income. And basically, I personally prefer the pistols over the birds these days because the fusion version is that much cooler. And it's like, you know, the Terra Jizu that you need to craft that stuff does, in the end, add up money. You know, you get those rewives, in the end, add added up as money. So it is actually one of the best items to take for a gold run. And if you already have the Terra Jizu, 
you would be really opting out of a lot of great damage if you didn't pick this up here as well. The only downside it can sometimes, you can get trolled and you don't get the twin, uh, the, the other version there. If that um, happens to you too often, consider buying rerolls. Just the best thing that you can do. And beyond that, well, not so good for maximizing your gold income, sadly, is the garlic, the whip. They are really pretty low DPS items alongside with the wand and the knives. These items are pretty good for self-defense, like this knocks away enemies pretty decently, just like the garlic, and the whip has a really insane sustain, but in the end, DPS-wise, they tend to underperform really massively just my experience so if you can avoid these weapons but if you can't survive without them by all means play with them i personally think the whip and the garlic along are among the best items to pick up that to keep you alive because they they add in defensive qualities and they still do dps so thanks for that certain person that gave me a pretty lengthy comment about how much he didn't like the other um, tutorial because that really made me rethink my choices and let's talk about the laurel and the cloth lance and avoid these items if you can only play them if you don't if you're unable to survive otherwise just just like that another uh, honorable mention goes for the armor because it upgrades the rune tracer and the rune tracer is now a pretty crazy weapon when it's upgraded although the rune tracer is still one of my favorite unupgraded weapons because it still performs crazy good so worthy of mention is the song of mana and well the managa doesn't perform damage wise too good it's the slow that really kicks in good it is a more of a defensive choice and last but not least let's talk also about the scholomaniac so this thing increases your income if you can't kill it so if you are ever at that point where you feel like man i'm erasing everything i'm basically just holding down one key in one direction and uh i'll just kill it. i'm just killing everything consider this thing but dps wise the manaja is an underperformer although i must say the song of mana is a really cool weapon to clear out early levels but it is really in the later stages of the game from my own experience rather underperforming so last but not least let's talk about the last accessories before we're done with this tutorial i already mentioned the spinach it is just that great 50% more damage and everything. I want that in every run. Same goes for the Empty Tome. It's just, you know, we we already have that insanely high uh, cooldown reduction. Please give me more. And beyond that, the Crown and the Stone Mask. These items are mandatory, in my humble opinion, at least. The good thing about the Inlaid Library is that you can get the Empty Tome and the Stone Mask for free. I personally won't, can't emphasize it enough. If you have trouble surviving, grab the empty tome before your accessory bar is full. There's no shame in that. You don't need to finish the run with eight accessories only because you can. If you're dying beforehand, you, get, you won't get any money. This run is totally designed to survive until the very end. And therefore, whatever makes it easier for you to survive, go for it. And beyond that, well, Attract Orb is nothing we need. Duplicator is still an item. Whenever you can get it, just, just get it. It's that good. And if you have it, just, just keep an eye out for this dude, because it's also that good. And beyond that, well, I... Oh yeah, I want to talk about the this one here. This is one of my favorite... Um, favorite solutions in between this item is a inter is a mediocre performer dps wise but it is among the best self-defense items that i know it creates this barrier around you and you can extremely easy kill enemies with it by just standing your positioning yourself with a saw blade to just mow down the boss i love this item for these qualities and therefore spellbinder Spellbinder is extremely cool, but it is not that necessary for this build. I don't know. I think you could evolve beyond the uh, beyond this item, but I personally always end up with one 
self-defense item. Oh yeah, one last mention about the axe and the uh, cross. These items are usually not that good, but on this character, funny enough, they are. Because of that extremely high cooldown reduction, you get a fire rate of these things that it all <laughs> that they actually do make quite a lot of damage. So that's that. I would be totally interested in how much gold you can do with this method in one run. Feel free to drop me a comment about that. Or if you find like there's something you want to tweak or or, or talk about. I'm open for that. So leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily videos from me, and I hope you'll have some more fun with the vampire survivors. See you there, and have a good one. Bye-bye.